Hi everybody and thanks for joining me. In a previous video I showed you my favorite toy, uh, the Color Muse, for measuring uh, supplied colors, uh, odd colors, right? In this video I'm going to show you how to take that one step further and actually use that to match certain colors within Flexi in this case. So first and foremost, um, what I've done is uh, for this for this particular example, I am going to use this right here, post-it notes, okay? Post-it notes, I have no idea what color this is. It really doesn't match any color that's in my Pantone book, not exactly. And let's say this is what a customer provided me. I want this post-it note color. I measured the color using my color muse, right? This guy right here. I measured that and I got values. I got lab values, right? What I'm going to do now is show you how I would set that up in Flexi to automatically kind of intercept that color and um, give it the appropriate match. And so what I'm gonna do here is I have a printer chosen. I'm going to go down to my setup. I'm going to choose default job properties. This is going to bring up this dialog box. And over here, I have color management. It's the third tab over. I'm gonna choose color management. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here to color mapping down toward the bottom. So I wanna make sure that this is on. Color mapping means it, it has the Pantone library as an example. So if I have Pantone 485 red, Flexi will intercept that name if it sees a spot color. And I wanna be really clear, this is for spot color. But Pantone will see the name Pantone 480, or Pantone Flexi will see the name Pantone 485 red. It will automatically apply its own map. So I'm gonna choose color mapping here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new mapping here. So I'm gonna to go to plus. I can go to my color chooser, right? I can do it this way. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure color. Now I'm not really gonna measure color, okay? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug the lab values in that I found when I used my color muse on that, on that uh, pan, uh, on that post-it note. So I'm gonna type in 86.20, Oh, 86.2, I don't know what I hit. Well, it's not gonna do decimals there for some reason. And so I'll just type in here for my B88. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. We're gonna be close enough here though. And so now, okay. If I go to measure color, oh, right. Here's what it's saying, is that right now, it's about 1.17, and you can see the numbers. I don't have to type them in. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put here, post it yellow. Anytime then it sees a spot color called post-it yellow, it's automatically going to plug that in. Now, I wanna be really clear about something and, and let me back out of here so that I can show you this. All right, this is CMYK, right? I do have other modes because this is a, a white printer that I'm using here, All right? Um, but that is specifically for, in this case, permanent gloss vinyl on the HP Latex 700 white, okay, at 12 pass, 120% density. Because this is a CMYK table that it's using, it's automatically converting this into output CMYK. It doesn't keep it as lab or anything like that, okay. But now, anytime I have a, a swatch that includes the color post-it yellow, Flexi will automatically intercept that color and it will use those CMYK values instead. Let me show you that. 
All right, I have Illustrator open here. Uh, I have this shape that I've drawn just really quickly. And if we look here, we see that this is in fact post-it yellow. Now I've made it, you know, this, this cyan on purpose to show you what's going on. I think it's a, a little more striking if I can do this. So let me bring it into Flexi. So I have it in Flexi here and you can see it is still very, very blue. Okay. And if I come over here, I want to verify that everything is set up properly in here. All right, so we're HP Permanent Gloss Adhesive Vinyl, 12 past 120. My color mapping is, in fact, set up here, Post-it Yellow. I made sure in Illustrator that that name matched this name here. But now watch this. If I come over here, this is cool. If I go to Object Color Control, watch what happens right here when I hover my mouse, right? You can see no color at all. Look at that. So I have the original color is spot post-it yellow, which is that cyan. But the output color is going to be 115920, which is a rounding for the values that I put into that, that color mapping dialog on the, on the other tab. That's what it does. So when I actually print this job, it will print that post-it yellow or as close as, as the profile allows, rather than the blue that's in there. Typically, you're not going to make it blue. I just did that so that it was really, really evident what was going on. When it's subtle, it's tough to see, especially on a screenshot. Okay, but here we can very, very clearly see what's going on. Now, let me take it one step further for you. I'm back in the color mapping dialog now, and I'm close, but I'm not really, really excited about where I am. So if I come over here to modify, or I can just double click the color name, either way, brings up that dialog box again. Looks familiar, right? But watch, now what I can do is I can come over here to print swatch. And when I print swatch, ask me what font I want the labels, doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna go ahead and print the swatch. And if I back out of here, all right, okay, all right, yep. If I come back out of here, open it in Job Editor, all right, Job Properties. All right. So here's my page preview. This is what it's actually going to print. So as I look at this, the center value, so row four, column four, is always going to be the value that I put in, which in this case you can see 1.176, 15.294, Right, that's that right there. But what it's doing is it's printing variations of hue and saturation and and uh, um, I feel like I'm missing one. Hue, saturation, and brightness. Uh, so I have a variety of colors, right? I've got 64 different options that are around that. And around that in the dialogue, and I'll go back in a moment and show you where that dialogue was, but in that dialogue, I got to choose how, how fine uh, those those values were. Uh, I believe I have it set up to be in in five percent increments. Um, but let's say I I would actually print this. I would print this at the mode that I need on the media that I need, and then I would compare it against. I'd take a post-it note, move it around all those swatches, and see which is the best. And it could be that after I do that, I say, oh, it's actually row row seven, column four. Okay. So now. If I come back into my default job properties, oops, into my default job properties, come over here into my color management, and then go to my color mapping, right? Edit this. Oh, yeah, there's the increment, 5%. Look. X and Y. So there I could put that it's actually seven and four. And watch these numbers when I update my color. Now I'm gonna do I'm gonna do X of seven instead of four. When I update my color, it changed. Looks like really it changed only my yellow value in that case. Okay. 
But whatever it needs to do to hit that color, which row seven column four now. Okay, so I can actually print those swatches and get really, really close. And I can fine tune that then by going back in here, plugging these numbers in and then printing another swatch based on that. Okay, so I can fine tune. I can say, oh, now I want to do 3% increments or whatever so that I get more finer control. More finer? That yeah, works. Finer control. Okay. The things to remember here, the, the big key takeaway to remember here is, first of all, these, these numbers are, are output CMYK, so they have no relationship to what you designed on. You do need to make sure that your color management is on, right? Use color correction. If I have no color correction, then this doesn't work as well. It'll still work, but it, it's harder to get to. Uh, but the big, big, big one is make sure that in your color mapping, make sure that that name is used in Illustrator, Flexi, InDesign, whatever it is that you're using, it has to be a spot color. If this is process, whether it's RGB, CMYK, uh, this will not work. It has to be a named color in your artwork, right? That's the really, really big one, okay? So I hope that was uh, useful to you. Uh, I, I wish you the best of luck in matching those weirdo colors, uh, those difficult colors that you might need to hit for your customers. And thanks again for joining me. I'll see you soon.